Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play Sid Meier's Civilization VI. Up until this point in my noon time slot, I've been playing a series called Russian Sunset in Civilization V. The purpose of that series, of course, was to set the stage for this series, aptly named Russian Sunrise. The idea here is that we're going to use settings as similar as possible to the game we set up in Civ V, which means for this first Civ VI series on the channel ever, we're going to deliberately play on some of the most basic settings just to get a taste for the game as we all learn how it works. I'm going to learn how to play it. You're going to learn about it through watching. Maybe you already have it. Maybe you're trying to figure out if you want it. Whatever it is, we're going to play in some of the most basic settings for this first game, which means continent map mode, standard map size, Prince difficulty, and standard pacing. As we did in the Civ 5 version of the series, we're disabling score victory, which is called time victory in Civ 5. It's called score victory here, but it's the same thing. It just cuts you off at a certain point in history after a certain number of turns and gives you a score. Um, or of course the game is scoring you the whole time, but whoever has the highest score is the winner. We've cut that off. So we're going to have the option for religious victory, which is the new victory type. We're going to have the option for domination victory. We're going to have the option for cultural victory, and we're going to have the option for scientific victory. So what I hope to do with this series, in addition, of course, to whetting my appetite and yours for Civ 6 content on the channel, what I hope to do is give you a fascinating glimpse into how two identically configured games play out when comparing a Civ 5 game with a Civ 6 game. So I'm going to alternate in different series every 20 episodes as per usual, but given that Civ 6 has just launched and I'm very excited to bring it to the channel in full force, I'm going to take the unusual step of alternating to other Civ 6 content. So when this series takes a break after episode 20, I'm going to jump straight back into more Civ 6 and a different game for 20 episodes, then come back to this one and then back and forth as series end and begin, etc., etc., and so on and so forth. Long story short, translation for those of you that are new to the channel, that are new to the channel, if I could speak, <laughs> it's going to be nonstop Civilization 6 for a couple of months here, for maybe like three months or so at least. I'm just very excited about this game and I want to play it and I want to get good at it and really learn about the nuances of this new game. Sound good? Okay, that being said, I am as ready to see this as you are, so we're going to jump in. Let's go ahead and get rolling. We're going to create a game. I've played a very little just to make sure I kind of knew what I was doing. Those of you who know me, who've been following the channel for a while, know that I have been following along. Uh, with the Civilization VI Press. I am not a layman when it comes to this game, but we're all new to playing it to a certain extent, so it's very different to actually interact with the game as opposed to just learning about what it's going to be like. Let's see, we want a standard map size, we want to turn off score victory, and I think that's it. So this is the same game we set up in Russian Sunset. Obviously, Catherine was the leader in Civ 5, but we're playing as Russia. We have seven random leaders. We have no con no idea who it's going to be, so it'll be a different um, cast of leaders than the series we had in 5, but that's fine. We knew that going into it. And then, of course, as standard as possible, including Prince difficulty. When I actually played getting started with the game, I wanted to learn some of the interface, so I actually turned on Warlord difficulty just so as to just have a sense of the different uh, mechanics and what worked the same as in 5, what didn't work the same as in 5. So this is my first time playing on Prince difficulty just for you. Let's go ahead and jump in, see how things go. Stirrings of life beneath water to the great beasts of the stone. Oh, Sean Bean. To man taking his first upright steps. You have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Embrace the chill winds of the motherland, Tsar Peter. Your fascination with science and culture is a gift, and you will learn much from your grand embassies to foreign lands. Under your rule, Russia will surely flourish and spread, absorbing all that lies around it perhaps creating the greatest land empire seen on this earth. Okay. Okay, awesome. That actually was perfect timing. So we're ready to start. But before we do that, let's just take a quick look at what the options for Russia, or not the options, but the special features and abilities are for Russia. They get the Grand Embassy, which is their special ability. You get science or culture from trade routes with civilizations that are more advanced than you are. So Russia is very good at keeping up scientifically and culture-wise. Of course, in Civ 6, there are different research trees for each of these attributes. 
So very, very important to have that ability. And then the Mother Russia attribute, which is extra territory upon founding cities, which is cool. But then you also get extra faith and extra production just from Tundra. So Russia is just as much a production powerhouse as they were in Civ 5. They do it in a different way, but they're, they're a production-focused Civ. And also, that extra territory from founding cities is just awesome. Every time you found a city, there's just more in your territory immediately than you're accustomed to, even with the very first city. It's really cool. And then, of course, we get the Cossack and the Lava Unique District, which is a variant on the Holy Site. So let's go ahead and jump in with the game. Oh, here we are. 4000 BC, turn one, civilization six begins. Here's our settler, nice and close. One thing that's really weird about Civ 6 for me so far is they a lot of the hotkeys that you're used to from, from Civ 5 don't work. So WASD does not move around. You have to use the you have to use the arrows. Uh, or you could click and drag like this, which I found easier since I don't want to reach all the way over to the arrow keys. Um this just seems awkward. But anyway. So let's have a look at our settler location here, because where you found cities in Civ 6 is very, very important. It's important in Civ 5 as well. Oh, look at that rock in the middle of the stream. That's so cool. This game is just gorgeous. Anyway, sorry, I don't, I don't want to get too distracted with just how good this game looks. But anyway, how many times can I say anyway in the process of about three minutes? So this settler, <laughs> we have actually some resources near us that are, are going to be quite useful. We're also on a river to start with, which is good. We don't have any tundra tiles near us, which is bad. We ideally need to be near tundra tiles and the game did not spawn us near any. So I'm going to go ahead and because we are so close to the water, just to show you how good this is. Here's our settler lens. We get a nice bonus specifically an amenities or I'm sorry, a housing bonus of plus three as opposed to just plus one for being on fresh water. So we're going to found St. Petersburg right there. Again, look at that extra territory just right out of the gate. So again, some of the hotkeys don't quite work yet, so I'm used to hitting M to pull up my movement uh, interface and can't. <laughs> so instead, I'm just holding down right click to see where I can move. But let's have a look. I don't see any tundra yet at all, which is not reassuring. But all right, to start out, let's go ahead and get a scout. It's going to take five turns. And... Research-wise, opening the tech tree. Similar first options for research. Cool. Nice little key here. We're going to hide the key. So we can research pottery and get a granary. Animal husbandry, get the ability to start a pasture or a camp. Or mining, to where we get the quarry and the mine. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I've got a couple of things near me that would require that. See, I'm kind of tempted to go for mining first. Again, Civ 6 is much more map focused. You really have to pay attention to what your specific situation is when you're making decisions, which I think is really cool. Yeah, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead. As much as I want to go for pottery so I can get that granary, uh, I want to go for mining as soon as possible. So we're going to do that. Code of Laws is already being researched. It's going to be done in 15 turns. Mining will be done in nine. Let's go to the next turn. Nobody look at the clock at the top of the screen. Just don't pay attention to that. <laughs> I haven't been up all night playing Civ 6. Who, me? Never. It was either this or get up very, very early and make sure that I could make the, the noon time slot for scheduling after encoding and getting the episode ready and everything. So I just decided to record really late after having played for <laughs> most of the morning. Oh, it's so funny that that clock is there. What if you can turn it off? I'll check later. Anyway, um... Oh, goody hut. We're gonna go that way. So there are no more ancient ruins in Civ 6, which I love because it was always so weird. You start out in 4000 BC and there are random, like, Roman-looking ruins where you can get, you know, extra technologies or free settlers or, well, free settlers on lower difficulties, but uh, free citizens, culture points, etc., but it's like you're in 4000 BC. What ancient ruins are there in the world? This is the beginning of civilization. So in this case, you're just looking at other small proto civilizations that might know things about the world. We've got some mercury right here, by the way, which is really cool. 
but those proto civilizations might know things about the world that are useful. So that's what these goody huts are. Oh, we've already got a barbarian visiting us. That's not good. So let me, we're going to have to chase him down. Wow. That was quick. Barbarians didn't waste any time and barbarians are brutal in six. We're going to need to keep up with him. This could be challenging. That they can gain experience by experience. Okay, cool. Okay. Now for this scout, I kind of just want to explore in a different direction. Now the question is, what should I build next? I kind of want to do the, the dual scout approach. Well, let's do that. Let's, let's go traditional Civ 5. We're going to do scout, scout, and then maybe monument. That's a traditional Civ 5 starting technique, but we're just going to try it. See what happens. Okay. This, this barbarian is getting away. Very mountainous terrain near us. No tundra, which is not good. That, that really is an important piece. Oh, Hey, we met cobble. Cool. All right. So they want a trade route, which we can arrange. And we got an envoy with Cobble for being the first to meet them, which is great. So we're actually getting extra production in our capital now, which will help make up for the fact that we don't have any Tundra near us, so we can't take advantage of Russia's special bonus. I'm just trying to spot that barbarian. Where did it go? There it is. All right, let's close this out. Next turn. Two turns until the other scouts. Hunt. Oh, it ran right toward me. Interesting. Well, that's phenomenal. Hopefully we can continue to, I think, one more fight and we should be good. That's really good news. I'm actually going to keep going with this scout because I want to see if I can find the camp that he was running for. I want to know where it is. Oh, good. They're going to kill him. So this is Cobble with two warriors already <laughs> on Prince Difficulty. So the way barbarians work in Civ 6 is they send scouts. And as long as you kill the scout... Oh cool, we got the mine. As long as you kill the scout, then you're fine. You don't have to worry about getting attacked like you would like you would get attacked in Civ 6. Okay, here's our other scout. Very good. Let's go ahead and go down this direction and see what we can uncover. But if the scout turns around and goes back to inform its barbarian comrades at the barbarian camp... If it makes it back to the camp and reports on the location of your city that it found, then you will get attacked and you'll get attacked uh, in much more uh, severe fashion than you would in Civ 5. So just things to be aware of. So we switched to pottery research there. I think I am going to go for the monument here in St. Petersburg. God, the game is just beautiful. I'm very, very impressed with how it looks, and it runs really well. Hey! Why do you come before the immortal son of heaven? Mm -hmm. Got a high opinion of yourself there, buddy. The great Qin Shi Huang. It is an honor to meet you. Exchanging information on our capitals is a great idea. It should help promote trade. Okay, so we have met another civilization, which means we got a nice Eureka. Your knowledge of writing has advanced considerably, which for turn 11, that's pretty good to have a bit of a head start on writing. So we've met the Chinese. Oh, hey, we found the barbarian camp that the other one was going for. Very good. We're going to explore this way and see what's going on down in this direction. It looks like we do have a number of good resources near us, which is nice. You've met a new civilization. Yes, I know that. Thank you. <laughs> I know, damn it. Just found that out. All right, I'm gonna go down this way. Oh, we met another city state. Were we the first to meet them too? No, we were not. China beat us to them. But what? Hang on, I didn't see the quest. Amsterdam wants us to send a. Tra okay, so they both want trade routes. That actually is not bad. I can get envoys with both of them just for setting up a trade route sooner than later. That is great. 
Where do you see the promotions that you can give scouts? They're so flippin' cool. Next turn. I'm really upset that I'm not near any Tundra tiles, though. That is really going to throw off my game. No pun intended. Okay, maybe a little bit of a pun intended. <laughs> I'm still amused that the clock is up on the screen. I can just feel the judgment coming from all of you. Oh, cool. Having discovered another continent, we realize there is a wide world of trading opportunities. Your progress towards foreign trade has advanced considerably. Advanced considerably. See, I'm up so late that I can't talk. But that is really good. That's actually a happy coincidence because we uh, we're going to need to move towards trading sooner than later. Advanced trade is a civic. I'll just have a look at it real quick in the civics tree or rather foreign trade. So now it's only going to take 15 turns to finish researching that. And then we can have trade routes set up with these city stage, or at least one of them. Maybe we can do one at a time. Oh, look, there's a goodie hut. Perfect. I'm going to cross down here and see what's going on up here. I love the fog of war. I mean, I've seen it. You know, we've all seen it. We've been, if you've been paying attention. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to do. Let's look at the new continent we found. So the continent we started on was Valbara. And then we found the new continent over here, which is connected by landmass Gondwana. So interesting. We are on this continent here. Let's look at the other map modes real quick. There's no religion yet. Appeal. Uh, we're not in a very appealing area, are we? Uh, settler map mode, but we can actually found a city in a pretty appealing area down here. So that might be a good spot. That's a good way to kind of spot overlays where good cities could go. Whatever stays green when you switch between these map modes, that's generally where you want to try and smack a city down, so to speak. And then government shows distribution of governments across the map. Interesting. Political map mode. I really feel like Firaxis has drawn some basic inspiration from, dare I say it, Paradox uh, in the development of Civ 6 um, and really for the better because there's just more information that's readily available uh, from a simulation perspective. Just really helps you stay apprised of everything you need to know. All right, we're going to come down here. New coast tiles, actually coastal cliffs. Watch what happens when the raves come up here. This is pretty cool. Actual crashing waves. And you can't disembark over these the way that you can over coastal tile. That's completely new to Civ 6. Four turns until our monument is done in St. Petersburg. Four turns until pottery is done. And one turn until Code of Laws is done. Hey! Enacting new policies in our government can be of great benefit. Thank you very much. So we're going to change policies. We are a chiefdom right now, which means we just get one military policy and one economic policy. So let's go ahead and go. Since we're Russia, I don't think I need, especially since we're getting that bonus from Kabul right now, I don't want to go for urban planning. I want to go for God King. I want to get the extra gold and faith in the capital right now and start building towards a pantheon. And then definitely some combat strength to go towards barbarians. Yes, that sounds good to me. Every time you finish a civic research in Civ 6, you get to change those cards that you just saw. Switch them around to your heart's content. It's really cool. So you're constantly customizing the bonuses your Civ gets, but you lose the ones that you were using previously. So it's not like Civ 5 where you're just constantly accumulating cultural policies. You have to give some policies up to move to the next level. All right, we're going to go for foreign trade, which is 12 turns away. Hey, I found Tundra. Very good. We need to try and get a city down here, which is going to be challenging because China. Um, hey, natural wonder too. Very cool. So Pantanal is right here. Knowledge of astrology has advanced considerably. Awesome. So we got a eureka moment from discovering a natural wonder. 
So this warrior, um, can, oh, because of the goody hut, he can now be promoted. That's awesome. So we'll promote him next turn. Our trade delegation should be arriving soon with gifts of the finest spices, tea, and silk in the Middle Kingdom. Please enjoy. Your delegation is most welcome. Tell you what, let's send a delegation to him too. Let's try and get a good relationship with him. Oh no. That must mean that, yeah, Barbarian Camp just spawned right off of our borders. That's not good. That's not good at all. All right, if this is anything like Civ 5, the Barbarians are not going to be happy with me, or the, the city-state is not going to be happy with me for just waltzing through the territory right here. Looks like another Barbarian encampment. I'm going to come all the way down here just to scout the coast. Okay, this is the southern edge of the map. I do definitely want to try and get a city down here if I can because it'll be a powerhouse. But this scout, I mean, I'm going to get attacked because this is the scout, this is the camp. That's a really crappy spawn. Oh, that's terrible. Clay must feel happy in the good potter's hand. Okay. Monument's going to be done in one turn and we're going to have to train up some additional military units. We're going to have to because otherwise we're in trouble. Now, this scout, we've got both of our scouts actually pretty close together right now, which is not ideal. I wasn't doing that on purpose, but that's how it worked out. We're going to go for animal husbandry now, or are we? Actually, let me go for riding seven turns away, and that way we can start building our first district. We can maybe have a research advantage. Okay. Okay. Still just pushing along down here. Okay, we've entered this scout's zone of control, so that's going to make him a little bit harder, or make it a little bit harder for him to move. Now, let's go ahead and build a slinger here. Because killing units with slingers will help get us towards archery faster. That's one of the boosts you can get. And there's a couple of scouts around, so that would be easy to do. Oh, good! That scout was not able to get away from my warrior. So hopefully we can continue to do damage to them. But it's going to be challenging. All right, you go up there. Explore that direction, please. And you go over here. That's not going to peel back too much territory, but there's a lot of tundra down here. It's definitely a Russian city or two needs to be down here. So we might end up in competition with China in this series because... Yeah, <laughs> we need that territory if we're going to take advantage of our benefits, our bonuses. And I'm not feeling like Mr. Nice Hadrian in this series. I'm, I'm, I'm already feeling like I, I want to I wanna take the fight to some of the AI and see how things go. All right, let's go ahead and... Oh yeah, this unit has a promotion. Totally forgot. All right, let's see. Um, yep, we're just going to go for Battle Cry. So extra combat strength. All right, there goes the scout right there. Slinger is available. Choose production. Let's... I feel like I should probably go ahead and build some additional military just to make sure I'm safe. So we're going to do that. This scout's going to come up here. Okay, now we have eyes on the Barbarian camp and the scout. I want to scout out this tundra as much as possible. Alright, so we are on turn... We've gone through a decent number of turns here for the beginning of the game. Let's see. For the very first episode, rather, is what I meant to say. So we have foreign trade now, which is very good. We can change policies. Uh, I'm good with what I've got. We got some new policies here. Maritime industries. 100% production towards ancient and classical era naval units. We don't have any naval units yet. Um, and then caravanseries, which is plus two gold from all trade routes. I'm happy with what I have right now.
Awesome. So we got the scout. Yes. Excellent. So we got the boost for archery on account of that. And let's go ahead and send this unit further this way. Just trying to explore as much as possible over here. There is lots of tundra down here. I need to settle down here. I'm going to get production from all of these tiles. It's just a huge opportunity. I can't miss it. We'll go ahead and go for craftsmanship. Nothing has been boosted yet on the civics tree. So just going to work my way down the tree for now. And actually on that note, we're at the 25 minute mark. So I will go ahead and cut this episode here. In the next one, I'm going to work on establishing my second city. I'm going to try and actually get it down here sooner than later. Maybe found a city right here on this uh, river in order to get things going. But yeah, we're, we're definitely going to do that. Uh, in the next episode and see how that goes. So thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along if you're not subbed already. I upload new episodes in Russian Sunrise every day at noon Eastern Daylight Time, which is GMT minus four for those of you not in the States, soon to be GMT minus five because we're about to go back to Eastern Standard Time instead of Eastern Daylight Time. But again, it's GMT minus four for those of you who might be tuning in from overseas. Again, thanks very much for watching. Comments are always welcome. Please let me know what you think and I'll see you in a bit.